Look at that. Nice. Hi and welcome to another episode. My name is Lupo and I just received my battery cells from China. Or apparently it wasn't China, it was from a German warehouse because I needed them quite quickly. I didn't want to wait two months. There's There are definitely better deals, but then you have to, to wait two months and I don't want to do that because now it's summer and I want to use uh, the batteries and build the solar system. I think they were delivered uh, within 10 days or something like that, so quite quick. And also the packaging is super nice. As you can see, thick foam everywhere. That was really good. Even the individual packages of the cells, foam inside, they were really well packaged. So I was quite happy with that. There are also no scratches. They look really brand new. Original QR code. The only small difference that I noticed is this cover here. So this cover is a different one, just one cell. There is the plus symbol missing, so it's a different plastic lid cover of the pole. But I think that shouldn't be a problem. I also quickly checked the voltage. Three of them were 3.27 and one at 3.26. So it's a difference of around 10 millivolts. That should be completely fine. And usually they are also matched and balanced um, by the company. So I hope that wire them up in parallel and let them sit for a day. And then hopefully they should be balanced. So after 24 hours, even a bit longer, I think it was almost two days, I checked the voltage and all of the four cells were at 3.27 so I was ready to build the battery and wire them up in series and then attach my BMS and then charge it up. For the BMS I decided to go for a for a DALI and for an older model so the previous model not the smart model because I heard and read a lot that people encountered problems with the new one with the smart DALI BMS so I decided to go for an old one because they are really reliable and for the environment at the mountain hut I'm, I don't need Bluetooth and all the, the fancy stuff. So I decided to go for an old one and have a reliable one. The only downside with the old Dalis is that there is no low temperature cutoff and I will definitely need one in the hut. So if you have any recommendations how to achieve that, please let me know in the comments. So for the connection of the BMS you have to connect the cables to the terminals and usually you can use ring terminals for that and crimp them. The problem was that I had just the yellow ones for M6 screws of the terminals, so the bigger ones. And that is not a good fit for the really tiny cables. So I had to come up with a workaround and I decided to, to solder the cables to the ring terminals so for my test that I have at least a, a proper connection. My soldering skills are almost non-existent. So let's quickly go through this painful phase. And here we are, ready to go. So first of all, you connect the balance leads to your terminals and you start always with the black one. So the black one goes to the most negative terminal on the first cell and then the other ones, they go to, to all the positive ones. So the next cable next to the black one goes to the first positive one, the second red one to the second one, the third one to the third one and the fourth one to the most positive terminal at the end, the last cell. After connecting that, that's very important, don't already plug it into the BMS. You should definitely check if everything is correct. So you can measure at the black the voltage. So you start with the voltage between the black one and the first red one. Should be the voltage of one cell, then you can measure it between the black one and the second one, should be two cells. Or you can also measure 
always between a, a pair and then should that should be always um, around the 3.2 or whatever your cell voltage is so there shouldn't be any other under voltage so that you know okay everything is fine after that you can connect the plug to the bms and then you connect the the b minus cable of the bms to the battery so that's that's in in my case the blue one and you connect that to the most negative terminal and after that you should be able to measure the 13 point something voltage of the whole battery pack between the most positive one and the negative cable coming out of the bms if that is not the case maybe you have to to short the two thick cables of the bms and then the bms should be active and after this procedure we can already attach the charger i put the charger to 14 volts at the beginning and 5 amps that's the maximum of the charger yeah and then we have to wait a bit 5 amps is not that much for 120 amp hours battery so it will definitely take a couple of hours so see you later so here i am again after 15 hours and around 80 amp hours that was pushed to the battery the charger turned off i don't know why exactly because 80 amp hours is definitely not enough i don't think that the cells were at 40 amps amp hours already so i guess there is another problem i just checked the voltages of the of the cells and i found out that one is really really high the three of them are at 3.3 .3 and one is almost 3.7 and I also tried to to start the charger again and monitor the voltage of this one cell and I saw that it went up to 3.7 and then the charger switched off so I guess it was even not the charger that switched off but the BMS disconnected the battery due to high voltage protection of the cell so one cell really drifted away and that's really strange because they were kind of balanced, hopefully. And usually that's sufficient to just connect it in parallel and let it sit overnight if they are matched and balanced. So I'm not sure what the problem is, if it's a problem with the cell. I could imagine that it's not a 120 amp hour cell. So my plan is now just to get this one cell, take it out of the battery pack and then try to discharge it and see if the capacity is 120 amp hours or less because then maybe this is a faulty battery. So that's definitely not what I expected. What you see in the YouTube videos, right? You order the cells, they are already balanced at the almost same voltage. You let it sit for a day or something like that. Then it's balanced, you wire up the whole thing and it works out of the box. So the learning for me is, first of all, bug hunting is not just for us software engineers. Also in this area of battery building, you have to really dig deep to find the root cause. And that's what I have to do now. It just takes a couple of hours. And the second learning for me is that top balancing might be important if it's not a faulty cell but that's what i will find out now with discharging and checking the, the cell or maybe even other cells so i hope that i can show you in the next video what the problem was if i've found the problem already if you have any ideas or comments or suggestions what i can do please write down in the comments what i should do or what you think what the problem is with my battery pack. See you soon then with a solution for my problem.